right. So please welcome up to the stage, Mr. Billy Goldsmith. My father-in-law brought me over an old heavy beagle dog. I mean, this beagle dog looked like a beagle that had swallowed a beagle. <laughs> looked, looked a lot like its owner. Well, immediately made me want to go hunting, and I was going to call my friend who's a big-time rabbit hunter. Well, I just remembered that I haven't talked to him in two years, and the reason was uh, I took my dog, old Goldie, with him, and he asked me right off, he said, does that dog run a deer? I said, oh, no. Now, the reason why you ask that question is if a beagle dog starts barking, all the dogs will follow. Now, if it's running a deer, it's liable to run miles, you might lose your dog. He had a $1,000 dog. He didn't want to take a chance with my dog. So he said, I don't trust that mutt. I'm going to put a shock collar on that dog. When I tell you to shock that dog, you hit that button. I said, all right. Well, they started hunting, and my dog went right off, boom, real fast. He said, shock that dog. I said, you think my dog's running a deer? Shock the dog. You think my dog's really running a deer? Shock that damn dog. <laughs> well, I didn't. And it got out of sight a little bit, so now the button wouldn't work. <laughs> well, he headed up to the left as fast as he could. And I didn't realize it, but he had grabbed my dog by the collar. Well, I ran up here to the right as fast as I could try to get an angle. Well, I hit that thing six or seven times. <laughs> well, and I'm shocking, I'm shocking my friend and that dog. <laughs> when I ain't lets, the, lets it go, and I'm continuing to shock when well, now that dog's associating that pain with my friend. <laughs> so he starts biting my friend and chasing. Now my friend's running, running back to me. Stop shocking that damn dog. <laughs> so I call him and I said, ask him, I got a dog now very heavy. I promise you, it won't run a deer. So he reluctantly told me, all right, you can hunt with me. But now I'm telling you something. I got 10 big time hunters coming in from Tennessee. High dollar dogs, championship bloodline. You and that mud of yours just kind of hang back there and hopefully you'll learn something. <laughs> when we showed up for the hunt, oh, I mean, they had them fancy dog boxes, fancy collars with their name on it, fancy leashes. You know, and even the owners of the dog had these vests on with all the trials they'd been to. A couple of those dogs even had jackets. It was kind of cold. <laughs> Me and my dog were like a fish out of water compared to this thing. My dog actually rode up here on my lap. <laughs> he... He drove half the way up here, and uh, don't laugh, he actually drives a little better than I do. <laughs> so we got there, and uh, I mean, those dogs were better than advertised. I mean, they were getting rabbits right, left, right, left. My dog, after 20 minutes, was wore the hell out. <laughs> he was in the back of the pack here looking for a cigarette. <laughs> Matter of fact, I think he's a Paul Mall non-filter dog. <laughs> well, I was trying everything I could to get some energy. I got him... Uh, two Twinkies and two of those five-hour energy drinks. <laughs> Nothing was working. So we finally got together, and they're all in a big huddle here talking. And all those guys are just laughing at me and my dog, just laughing at us. I'm sitting there thinking, boys, I don't care if you're talking about me, but don't be talking about my dog. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> well, all of a sudden, this one guy spoke up, and he said, let me tell you something, big man. He had a $5,000 dog. He said, I'm going to show you how championship bloodline works. I'm going to show you how it works. Next time we shoot a rabbit, I'm going to holler at that dog. It's going to pick that rabbit up. It's going to bring it over and drop it on my foot. I said, no way. He said, wait. <laughs> well, they get a rabbit. He starts hollering. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. I mean, I'm waiting with anticipation. What's going to happen? I hear something coming. Sounds like a dog. I see the weeds moving. I think it is a dog. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's my dog. <laughs> and it's got a rabbit in its mouth. Oh, what the hell? So it comes over to the fence. All those guys are there. It can't get across the fence. Puts the rabbit down, digs a hole, picks the rabbit up, climbs under the hole, drops that rabbit on my foot. <laughs> so I look up and I said, boys, was what you going to show me look anything like that right there? <laughs> well, their jaw dropped like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. All right. Now, I want to tell you what I am, boys and girls. I am a fantastic, I'm a great winner. Okay, I snatched that dog up. It wasn't going to hunt another foot. I said, Bo, you know what I paid for you? That's right, nothing. <laughs> I said, you see these other dogs? You know what they pay for them? No, no, yeah, $1,000. <laughs> that one right there, 5000 
Well, I mean, I give them a little bit of that all the way back to the car, 30 minutes worth. <laughs> so you can imagine, I never got invited back to any hunts after that. <laughs> well, I take my dog home and uh, went in the house. I'm going to tell you, I retired that dog after that. You can't get no better than that. <laughs> I turned that dog into an indoor dog. One night, my family was gone, and me and the dog were down in the man cave down in the basement. And we are just reminiscing about that day, about that day. And you know, I started thinking, very seldom in a man's and dog's life do you have that perfect day. But on that day, on that day, me and Bo were not a fish out of water. Thank you. <laughs>